Hey, what's up garden friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? I hope you're good, I am great. Gonna pot up this lantana tree. It's a uh, kinda tall, and the top's in the sun, the bottom's in the shade. I'm losing the sun here, so I'm gonna move along with this fairly quickly. It's not gonna be anything too complicated at all, actually. I picked this lantana up in a video, I mean, just a couple videos ago where I was at Lowe's, and this is what I had in mind for it. I wanted to do something, a nice full sun planter with some annuals and some perennials, and just kind of mix things together, get some color going, make it a nice, fun, happy place for the bees and butterflies and hummingbirds. All done. Got my Supertunia Daybreak Charms over here on each side of this lemon coral sedum that is draping over the front of the pot. And then I put a banana cream daisy on each side of the lantana tree. In the center here, there is a croton, and I'm not really feeling the croton. I think it can go. It doesn't need to be there. Just felt unnecessary to have that there. These banana cream daisies that are in here, these get anywhere from about a foot and a half to up to over 30 inches high. So they have a decent spread to them. I really could have gotten away with just putting one of them in the pot actually, and it would have filled in just fine. And you can see they're recovering a little bit from being transplanted. A couple of these plants, the daisy that's over here on the left, and then this super tunia that's right here. Both of those plants, when I pulled them out of their pots, they didn't take much root with them. So that happens sometimes, unfortunately. That's why it's good to sort of wiggle the pots around a little bit and make sure you're getting the entire root mass out, which I did, but it's just something sometimes things just fall apart. So she's a little wilty and sad, but it'll be all right. Then even though it's not entirely necessary, I am going to come in here with my pruners and deadhead off some of the spent foliage just right above the leaf that's a little bit below there. The banana cream daisies get that name banana cream because their flowers as they age have kind of a banana cream sort of yellowy color, but they start off more of a white like a typical daisy. So in the long run what you end up with is having a plant that has some white flowers on it and some very light meringue kind of yellow flowers, which is fun. You get sort of a two-in-one there with these. Also I feel like I might have that a little bit backwards because it looks like the newer flowers are coming up more of a yellow color as opposed to the old ones being white. And they're perennial. Zones five and up, or five through I think nine. The banana creams are supposed to have a longer blooming season. You can of course encourage that to stay even longer by deadheading them. In the fall I tend to leave my daisies undeadheaded. I go ahead and I let sort of their last thing of blooms just kind of hang out on the plant and dry out because the birds and whatnot, the wildlife seem to enjoy gathering and eating up those seed heads. But otherwise throughout the rest of the year, even though you don't have to, I prefer to deadhead just because it makes the plants overall look a lot more tidy. Supertunia Daybreak Charm. A fold apart sun annual. They only get about eight to 12 inches high and they have a max spread of about 18 inches. And the flowers on these, as you can kind of see here, are much smaller than on a typical petunia more these really the flowers more like of what you would see on like a calabrac lemon coral sedum lemon coral sedums are a great plant to throw in with your annuals they're hardy through zone seven i believe so if you live zone seven and up then they are a perennial i'm in 6a 6b right on the border so probably not going to be a perennial for me however to overwinter the lantana tree, which I'll be talking about in just a moment, I'll be bringing this inside and letting it go kind of dormant. So it's totally possible that that super or the lemon coral sedum will do fine. It's a nice drought tolerant plant, but they can also take a really decent amount of water for being a sedum. And man, are they vigorous. I really 
contemplated what me actually hold on a second <laughs> that's better thought it might be nice to maybe move to where you can actually sort of see the plant i'm talking about the sun came through and we're just lighting everything up in the background didn't look good so lantana this variety is called confetti which it normally has pink on the outside and yellow in the middle most of the yellow that was on there has faded off and been blown away in the storms but that's all right it has new buds coming out go ahead and color up nicely when the fresh flowers come through the flowers that are on there aged and faded a lot the last couple of days because the pot that this was in it was small it was really hard to keep this hydrated i only had the plant for like a day and a half before i got it pot up because i couldn't keep the thing watered it just needed so much water in the tiny little pot and that monrovia soil just drains and drains and drains it's great soil but it dries out very quickly and then a storm blew it over so it's been through some things in the last few days now this one's standardized they are hardy zones nine and up in zone nine they may die back to the ground in the winter time or maybe even just defoliate like full full sun like a minimum six to eight hours of sun a day well-drained soil that does stay evenly moist. Lantana do tend to look their best when they get a regular fertilizing about monthly with an all-purpose. Seaweed fertilizers seem to work really well with them also. Just like with the Shasta daisies, you don't have to deadhead them, but I think these look their best when about once a month to every six weeks, I like to go through with my clippers and cut off the top like, I'd say anywhere from one to three inches of foliage. And the flowers on Lantanas go into seed. They'll produce little bitty berries, which are poisonous. So if you do bring this inside or even outside, just wherever you put it, you want to make sure that that's something that nobody who's going to eat them, pets, animals, children, whatever, will stay away from that. For me, when I overwinter Lantana inside, there are two different ways that I could go about it. I've always done as I let them go dormant. I let them just kind of chill out. They'll defoliate and it'll just look like a dormant tree that doesn't have any foliage on it. And I'll give it a splash of water probably about once a month and I'll keep it in a cool dry location for me that's in my garage however it is totally possible to keep them growing as a house plant like i said keep in mind the poisonous aspect of it but just put it in a window that gets lots and lots and lots of sun and don't let the soil dry out completely i would say you just like kind of with the standard house plant you let the top like inch to two inches of soil dry out should be okay that way and then of course rotate the plants for even growth and i wouldn't fertilize not unless you have it in like an atrium a really warm location where it's in active growth and not just kind of hanging out for the winter time in which case then it would be okay to fertilize this one is standardized i am going to leave it on that stake for a while probably a couple of months until it's rooted out and seems nice and steady in the pot if the appearance of those bands that wrapping that green wrapping that's on there is bothersome can always take some twine or something and use that instead might make it look a little bit nicer i don't really care so i'm gonna leave it but i can see how it would be bothersome to some people i don't know maybe i'll do that we'll see so from a design standpoint with a plant like this there are a few different ways i could have gone and I debated it a lot actually. With so much going on up top, it would have looked fine then to do just the lemon coral seed on the bottom. I don't think that it would have looked weird at all. I think it would have looked nice and classy and clean. Would have made for kind of a boring video though, wouldn't it? Just be like, hey, here's a lantana tree and here's some lemon coral sedum. I wanted to go ahead and tie the colors together a little bit. That's why I use the Supertunia Daybreak Charm because it has these pink flowers with the yellow centers, which is typically what the flowers look like up here on the confetti lantana just not right now as i'm filming this video and then these shasta daisies they're also a plant that is going to appreciate the same amount of sun maybe you won't like quite as much water as the lantana is going to get but i use a very 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 well draining organically rich soil for this so that shouldn't be too much of an issue and if it is what i decide on is i'll just take them out and pop them into my butterfly garden over time though these daisies the lycanthemums they are going to fill out this entire thing and it will be very very pretty with the daybreak charms coming over the front and the lemon coral sedum which isn't going to drape as much as those super tunias will which will help leave the design on the front exposed a little bit so yeah that was the design dilemma i don't think it really matters because i like it both ways could have even just done super tunias on the bottom would have looked fine i just wanted to be a little bit more elaborate with it when you have something that's standardized or almost a topiary sort of appearance it can look a little bit off to do an elaborate arrangement down below in the pot. It can sort of just pull your eye like all over the place, which can be distracting. That's one of the reasons I pulled the croton out of there. Like I said, I think the croton was just unnecessary. I also need it for a different project. So I was like, I'll yank that out. And these daisies are going to fill that entire thing in. So there's just no reason to keep it in there. Even though it did add a nice kind of texture and interest it just it was too much so for me this was my compromise to get everything i wanted in here i've got my flowers 
the colors will go together just fine. The daisies are a neutral and then having a mixture of the yellow, which isn't really apparent quite yet. But as these grow, we'll see more of that. White being a neutral made things a lot easier between deciding what to put in here. I had a hibiscus, which I don't think has any flowers on it. Let me see. Nope, no flowers. Hibiscus are not flowering very much right now. They're resting. That's what hibiscus do. But my point was Chatty Cathy, this hibiscus, the picture really doesn't do it justice, but in person, the flowers are a really pretty lemony yellow with a little ring of white that goes into a gorgeous pink center. It looks red in the picture, but it's pink, which also would have looked wonderful in here. So it's entirely possible that I may end up pulling those daisies out as they fill out a little bit, move them into my garden where they'll overwinter better and act as a perennial, and then pop the hibiscus in there because I'll overwinter the hibiscus in a fairly similar manner as I will the lantana, so they'll go well together. One of the fun things I like about doing arrangements and planters is when you have multi-purposes for things, if it doesn't work out, then I can just pull these, like I said, move them into my pollinator garden, no harm done. And I, they, there's no reason that they won't work out. They'll work out just fine. The main thing is actually about overcrowding. These daisies are very vigorous, so it might just get to be a little bit much, a bit full, maybe a little bit more than I would like. We'll see. There'll be updates on that with all the garden tours and everything. These multi flowers aren't that big of a deal. When I have a plant that doesn't respond well to being transplanted, sometimes I'll go ahead and give them a cutback anywhere from a third to a half the plant, and that way they'll just put out some new roots, flush out with new growth, and it can work out really well that way. And because the daisies that are in here, well, one of the daisies and one of those super tunias didn't take a lot of root with them when I pulled them from their pot, I am going to go ahead and keep this in part sun just for like maybe a week to a week and a half before moving it into full sun so that they have a chance to recover a little bit from having a lot of their roots torn out. It's just kind of a whoopsie. That shouldn't happen, but sometimes it does. Now at the end of the world, they'll be okay. Right, Tuck? Right, Tuck? You can be my helper? You hold the camera for me? That'd be nice. I need a camera dog. Overall, just a quick toss together, something to attract the butterflies and hummingbirds and bees, keep everyone happy, a pop of color to go ahead and drop into my pollinator garden as it's recovered. And like I said, like a week or so. All right, that's it though. Very simple. Not as simple as just doing the lantana with only lemon coral sedum, which I do think would have looked great, but pretty and more colorful. I know a decent amount of you live places where you can grow lantana as a perennial. What's that like for you? Growing them as hedges, just kind of popping them into the garden for a little bit of additional color. What's going on there? Comment down below. I love talking to everybody and hearing from everybody. What are some of your experiences with these banana cream Shasta daisies? I planted these up last year and I really liked them. They did great. There was a point in the summer where things got really hot and humid. They started to look a little bit shabby because they're getting overwatered, but I went ahead and just cut down on my watering. Sorry, I need to set this down. It's a noise. But when I went ahead and I cut back on the watering a little bit, they did just fine. I didn't have to wear out powdery mildew or anything like that. Like I said, I will make sure that there are updates posted on my Instagram. I use that more than anything else, but I have all my social media linked down below, so go ahead and follow me there. And don't forget to leave the video a thumbs up. Makes a really big difference for the channel, for the videos. I do appreciate it, so thank you. And subscribe as well and hit the notification bell because I upload multiple times a week. And as I'm looking more closely at this plant, I'm able to tell that it really is about ready for a cutback. A lot of old dying off flower heads on it. Which no, no, nobody wants to focus today. Nothing's behaving. Like here's one of those berries I was talking about. So I need to cut that off. As well as you can see some older spent flower heads that are in here. Needs a big pruning. So let me know if that's something you want to see. Like I said, I generally just go around the entire plant. It's a lot easier that way. And do a really big cut back on the whole thing. Just a couple inches just to shear it up, tidy it up. There's some broken branches need to be cleaned up. That's all easy. It's no big deal. I hope everybody's doing well, having a great day, a great life. Everything's just going beautifully for you. <laughs> and as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye. -bye.